So thank you for this kind introduction. Um, I guess I can mostly skip this slide now. Um, so I'll move on directly to another view of what I'm going to talk about today, and that's Cockpit, an open source software suite for um, controlling imaging systems of arbitrary scale and complexity. Um, and I'm going to try to cover several topics today. Um, first of all, what is the purpose of this software? Um, how does it work? Um, how you can use that software? Um, and finally, an example of a system that's implemented using Cockpit. Um, so the motivation of the development of Cockpit um, is that um, typically a conventional microscope um, is mainly an optomechanical device. Uh, there is no need for a special control called coordination most of the time. Um, and uh, the, the way that these kind of systems operate this is usually simple. Um, it doesn't involve any, any complex experimentation. Again, just in general terms. Um, but uh, a modern microscope um, in turn has uh, become a very complex um, type of imaging system. So we are not just talking about a microscope. Now this is an entire imaging system that contains more than just a microscope. Um, and it, that's the, the conventional microscope uh, with an addition of a camera, uh, a light source, um, some other forms of, of um, optical devices, um, things like a, a flip mirror or, or a spinning disc or things like this. Um, or alternatively, it could be an entirely bespoke um, imaging system. Um, and in this type of systems, uh, most components um, need to be precisely controlled and synchronized. Um, and the typical usage is in terms of um, complex imaging experiments or procedures, uh, which require at least some level of automation. So in order to do all this, you need obviously uh, very good software control. Um, and for biologists, uh, which is kind of the level at which I'm going to try to pitch this talk now, um, is that the current software landscape is mainly divided between uh, using the manufacturer software or some other form of commercial software or using a micromanager. Now, I think that both of these options have their own advantages and disadvantages. Um, obviously, when you work on, with um, one such complex imaging system, um, you to do an evaluation of your own, you're going to choose the right tool for the right job. Um, but I just want to highlight some disadvantages of these two uh, alternatives. Um, so for example, with a, a manufacturer software, uh, they usually cost money, sometimes quite a lot, uh, which could be a problem for a, a biology labs. Um, it's not something that you can easily learn from in the sense that you don't have access to uh, the source code or uh, a great understanding of the underlying technologies. Uh, you also, um, in, in the same vein, uh, it's not something that you can modify. It's not something that you can uh, tune or tailor for a specific application. Um, and because there's a lot of manufacturers out there and a lot of types of software like this, uh, this creates a, a fragmentation in the in the community, um, and this also leads to issues with reproducibi reproducibility um, in in experimentation. Um, on the other hand, micromanager, uh, or at least my experience with it, is that um, it's it's kind of difficult to use with um, when complexity increases. Um, especially, um, I've noticed a, a limited support for um, things like multiple cameras or if you want to do some sort of um, synchronization of the components using, for example, a um, hardware trigger or some sort of um, real-time control. Um, and finally, um, it's software written in, in Java and C++, which, although not really a disadvantage in, in technological aspects, um, it could be a bit difficult to, uh, in terms of, um, let's say, accessibility or finding people that are willing to work um, in these technologies. Um, so in order to address some of these um, issues, um, I am going to review Cockpit, uh, which is based on Python, which um, I believe makes it more accessible and easy to work with, uh, be it as a, as a user um, or as a developer. Um, it also features a, a, a architectural design which uh, lends itself to on scalability and complexity, 
uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's a, a, a tool that can be used to uh, control uh, systems of arbitrary um, scale and complexity. Um, it also includes support for um, hardware triggering and synchronization, uh, which is kind of like the, the backbone of uh, the way that we perform experimentation um, and the only way to actually achieve um, really high speed and synchronized experiments. Um, and finally, the entire workflow of the software um, has been ex uh, inspired by, uh, by, by the way, biologists work. Um, and uh, we kind of um, uh, suggest or um, um, propose a, a, a sort of a way to use the software which is intuitive um, and um, natural for, for uh, people that work in uh, performing biological experiments. Um, so historically, um, the software um, has been a, a single package uh, called just cockpit. Uh, but eventually, uh, it was decided that it makes sense to actually split this into two parts. Um, and at the moment, these two parts are called um, Python Microscope and Microscope Cockpit. So there is this, there is a little bit of a um, problem with the um, description or the nomenclature or the naming. Um, so I just want to make it clear that on one side, there is Python Microsoft and Microsoft Cockpit, but as a whole, these two packages are colloquially referred to as just Cockpit. Um, so the overall structure of the software is such that um, on one side, you have the uh, physical devices, the hardware devices, and then on the other hand, you have this um, graphical user interface and the ability to perform experiments and so on. And the um, job of cockpit is to link these two domains together. Um, it starts with um, Python microscope, which um, creates sort of an abstract, uh, uh, abstract device of the, of the physical device. And then it passes that information to microscope cockpit, which does some more abstraction and some more work in order to or use all these um, components uh, with the uh, user interface and to perform experiments. So going further into this abstraction, um, the way that um, Python Microsoft works is that um, there are definitions of various device classes, um, very generic things like cameras, light sources, um, filter wheels, um, and very common uh, devices such as these. And the idea is that regardless of what the underlying hardware looks like or, or the way that it works, you still have this common abstract representation of this category, this type of device. Um, and this is what I've tried to illustrate here. If you have different types of cameras, different, different manufacturers, different models and so on, they all end up with the same type of representation inside by the microscope, which is just an abstract camera, camera device. And then this further uh, provides users with uh, a common application programming interface or an API, um, which is kind of like a contract between programmers where uh, you have common set of um, commands and instruction, things like enable the camera or disable the camera or uh, configure the exposure time and so on. So um, in, a, in addition to this abstraction level, uh, the software provides um, something called a device server uh, which is a program that um, endows devices or augments devices with uh, networking capabilities. Um, and this is um, actually the crux behind the ability to um, uh, develop system or to create and build systems of arbitrary scale and complexity. Because in this way, you can have a simple, a simple system where you have a single computer um, with all the devices connected to that computer, or alternatively, you can have multiple computers with multiple devices um, communicating each other over a network interface. And this doesn't necessarily have to be um, a, a device in, say, remote places. Like, for example, you have one room with computers and servers and another room with uh, light sources and a different room with cameras and so on. It could be all together right next to each other talking over a network interface. Um, so on top of this um, Python microscope package, 
you can further add Microscope Cockpit, which is the graphic user interface part of it. Um, this is what it looks like um, by, by default. This is the default um, user interface. Um, on the left side is the sort of like the main window. Um, and on the right side is a camera view, which shows a, uh, an image obtained by one of the cameras. Um, in this case, the camera is called uh, e screen. Um, in addition to this, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Microscope Cockpit provides further abstractions, uh, which are things like um, unified translation manager management uh, in order to operate um, stages of, um, of various complexity. It could be just um, X, it could be X and Y, it could be X, Y, and Z, and so on. It could be multiple Z uh, stages, um, and so on. Um, also, things like um, tidying of images in order to create mosaics and so on. Um, the images that you see here on the screen on the left is uh, this um, unified translation management, um, where we have uh, the concept of a macro stage um, inside the window on the left side. Um, you can see a, a, an X and Y stage, uh, and on the right side there is a, a Z stage. And um, what uh, Microsoft Cockpit does is it um, uh, synchronizes the control between the two in order to provide the user with the ability to specify a precise location in X and Y and Z space, and then to um, uh, also specify steps or save specific locations in order to refer to them later or during an experiment. And on the right side um, is the mosaic view, um, which is, as I mentioned, a tiling of images. Um, you can perform uh, experiments by um, uh, swiping in a, um, in a spiral way uh, in order to create a, a full mosaic of your uh, specimen, or you can select uh, special regions of interest, uh, which you can uh, revise later uh, during the experiment. Um, in addition to this, uh, there is a, a touch screen control as well uh, in the software, which is a, an entirely different menu that um, Kind of encapsulates all the um, all the functionality of the software and it lends itself to uh, being used um, with a, a touch screen of display or control. Um, and finally, there is this um, the ability to perform experiments, as I mentioned earlier. Um, it's uh, an entire suite of there is an entire suite of um, predefined experiments. Uh, common experiments such as, for example, a, a Z stack um, or, or a swipe or something like this. Uh, but there is also the ability to create new ones uh, using the, the power of Python. It's, uh, uh, everything is developed um, sort of like a, a script file, so it's very natural and intuitive. Um, and here I'm showing just a um, uh, the, the, the uh, Z stack experimental menu, uh, which is uh, very flexible in terms of what can be specified. Uh, you can have multiple cameras or light sources. Um, you can interweave them, um, or you can uh, take them simultaneously. You can specify a number of uh, repetitions, stack heights, things like this, um, many of data, and so on. So it's very flexible and can do um, a lot of things. Um, and um, Cockpit also acts as a uh, sort of like a gateway to uh, user-defined uh, image analysis. Uh, things like, for example, um, AI. Um, here I'm uh, showing um, a um, um, the usage of another piece of software called Cytosensors, uh, which um, uses um, uh, AI in order to identify cells. Um, and this is this, this what it's, it's shown here. Um, right, next is the um, implementation of cockpit system. So um, as I mentioned earlier, um, this is pitched at our biologists, but all sorts of scientists as well. It's not something that you have to have um, specialized knowledge. You don't have to be an engineer or uh, you don't have to have a, a PhD in optics in order to, to use the software. Um, anyone uh, with a basic understanding of how a microscope works um, can, can use it. Uh, and the only prerequisite really is to um, have a device that can be controlled with software. Um, perhaps I should mention at this point that uh, it also has to be supported by, by Cockpit because Cockpit does not support all kinds of 
um, hardware devices, but, but this is a minor point. Um, in terms of how much effort is required, uh, the intention or the aim is to be able to install and configure uh, the TikTok Python packages um, easily. Um, it could be done with the um, uh, conventional uh, Python uh, package management um, software PIP. Um, so the installation and the configuration should be fairly straightforward. Uh, the only thing we really need to know uh, in order to configure them is to have a knowledge of your system, uh, what kind of components it includes mainly. Uh, other than that, it, uh, it's a fairly straightforward uh, procedure. Uh, and if you're curious um, how you can start on this journey, uh, for the people with adventurous spirits, uh, you can you can start right away by uh, visiting the website that I showed earlier, um, and I'll show um, a little bit uh, more info later. Um, but for the curious people, um, you can read the papers, or, or you can come and talk to us directly. Uh, we'll be quite happy to help you um, in that regard. Um, and I'm going to show a quick example of a system um, which is implemented uh, with cockpit. Um, it includes multiple channels and uh, multiple modalities. Um, it's essentially based on a, a conventional uh, inverted microscope that's um, off the shelf, um, could be a purchase from various uh, distributors and so on, manufacturers. Um, and it's endowed with a Norox quality hat, uh, as you can probably see on the image on the right. Um, with an addition of uh, a light source uh, and uh, two cameras. Um, the intention of the system is to um, be able to achieve high speeds of up to 100 frames per second uh, and uses the uh, high speed version of the Oryx Clarity uh, for that purpose. Uh, and it includes two imaging parts. Uh, one of them is the main imaging part with the Oryx Clarity. Uh, and the other one uh, uses uh, a camera directly coupled to the microscope with, in, a, in a wide field configuration uh, and it's used mainly for an overview. Um, this is a diagram of the system. Uh, there are some components that are shared between the two, um, the two imaging parts. Uh, that would be the, the microscope and for example, the, the ZPS stage, uh, as well as the controlling computer. Um, I've included a component called RTC, which is a, a sort of like a real-time controller, and both the RTC and the, and the uh, computer, uh, I have not linked to any of the components because they actually have very, very complex connection and they basically connect to most of the components in the diagram, so I didn't want to really um, overcrowd it too much. Uh, but the main idea, as I mentioned earlier, is that um, on one side you have the, the Oryx clarity connected to the microscope in a configuration for um, high speed main imaging and then on the other side you have a separate camera with some other optics intended for uh, uh, for an overview of your sample um, and this system is intended to be used as a sort of like a generic instrument um, suitable for various types of, of specimen experiments um, but in the uh, Davis's lab here in, in Oxford uh, we are mainly in, um, interested in uh, visualizing um, fish samples and to study um, RNA dynamics uh, using Drosophila cells and tissue. Um, and I think this is most of the things that I wanted to cover. Um, I want to thank you for listening. Uh, I want to show you the repositories, the GitHub repositories of the two uh, Python packages, which are at Python microscope slash microscope and at micronoxford slash cockpit. And I want to thank um, all the people from the Davis's group, from the dynamic group in, in the Department of Engineering, uh, Michael Oxford, uh, and of course, Orx. Thank you. Thank you so much, Danny. Um, it's, it's come a long way since I last saw Cockpit. Um, about six months ago, I guess. <laughs> um, you've implemented a lot more. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what's possible with the software. And it's great to see another open source software package coming along for people to give give as much um, choice as possible. Um, just one one note to the audience that um, Danny has been doing um, uh, studentship placements with with Aurox, and he's been very instrumental 
in, in uh, developing the Unity pro product, particularly the live cell imaging um, part. Um, I won't be showing that too much um, tomorrow. I'll just skim over it. But um, yeah, feel free to talk to Danny about his experiences um, with, with helping to develop such a cool microscope that we'll, we'll show you tomorrow. Um, so are there any questions for, for Danny? Um, feel free to type them in the chat window. Um, I know uh, Mika, again, has been asking me um, offline about um, how fast can you go with this system, especially um, acquiring Z-Stacks, because you're, you're using an Olympus microscope, right? Yeah, um, well, but the Z-Stacks are done with a, a z uh developed by the PI, Physic Physic Instruments, or something like this. Mm -hmm. um, and it really depends only on the speed that the device is capable of. Um, I think 100 frames per second, for example, is is, uh, is perfectly doable. Um, more than that, I don't think it's possible um, with the one that I currently have. But in theory, there, there is nothing limiting. And so are you communicating with the computer via USB communication or is it camera link or other? other um, well, uh, we communicate with the uh, device in various ways. Uh, some of them are connected with uh, USB, so it's a serial communication. Uh, some of them are connected directly, directly to the PCI bus of the computer, such as uh, the camera. Uh, and others are connected by the, um, the RTC device that I mentioned earlier, which is a real-time controller. Um, in the case of cockpit and microscope, uh, this real-time controller is very simple to implement. Uh, it could be a simple a Raspberry Pi board um, connected to, to the device that requires synchronization and control. As long as they require only digital triggers, I think that's, that's fairly trivial to do. Um, and yeah, in terms of speed, um, it, there, is, there is really no, no limits in, in, in the way that the software is designed. Okay, um, that's, that's great news. Maybe Mika can have a, have a play with it and see, see what he thinks. Um, we've got a question in the uh, chat folder. This is James Brown from Hamamatsu. Um, for integrating the individual components into the software, how much support has been available for Python specifically, or have you been primarily dependent on wrappers? Uh, yes. Um, all the drivers are implemented as wrappers, uh, Python wrappers around a uh, dynamic link library or some other type of driver developed by the manufacturer. Uh, can you can you see yes. yes. um, all the drivers are implemented as wrappers? Oh, um, I think Daniela, I think you've just joined the meeting, but you're not on mute. If you could make sure your microphone's on mute, we're hearing a, a nice right. echo. <laughs> um, Sorry, Dan, yeah, just to continue, yeah, to continue to answer that question, uh, yes, all the implementation of, of hardware devices is implemented as wrappers around a library provided by the manufacturer most of the time. Um, unfortunately, uh, we don't have the, the, the hardware support of uh, some other popular um, uh, tools, such as, for example, Micromanager, which supports pretty much everything. Um, but we do mostly the, the same thing. Okay, and which which cameras out of interest are you supporting at the moment? I know you've got photometrics um, so supported. Right, uh, we have uh, photometrics supported. Uh, we have uh, uh, Zymi camera supported. Um, we have um, Andor camera supported. Um, that's off the top of my head, everything that we support, I believe, at the moment. Okay, okay. So, uh, James, maybe you need to talk to uh, uh, Danny and the team at uh, <laughs> Oxford and, and, and get the Hamamatsu cameras um, supported as well. Um, they're, they're very commonly used with our system, so it would be nice to have everything um, integrated. Um, so, I'll get to you in a moment, Stan. Um, another quick question from Mika. Is the PFOC controlled with an analog signal or a COM port? Uh, I have no idea what to PFOC is a Oh, the, sorry, the piezo focus, the, the Oh, the PI. piezo is, is controlled with an analog voltage, um, but um, I've encountered devices which are controlled with digital uh, levels as well. If you have pretty fine positions, you can switch between them with a digital signal. Okay, okay. 
Um, and a question from Stan Botchway. Um, could you use Raspberry Pi in your implementation to simplify the hardware control? Yes, that's that's exactly what we do. Uh, we use um, a single board computer, could be a Raspberry Pi, which is a very popular uh, choice, uh, which is um, used in something called used, there's something called an executor device, uh, which then sends digital um, signals or digital triggers to all the devices it's connected to. And this is the way they achieve synchronization in high speed, it's essentially. Perfect, perfect. Um, it's nice when most of your answers are yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, Alex Corbett, uh, he's asking, are there any plans to link Cockpit seamlessly into other popular open source software? Um, maybe you could expand on that question, Alex? No, I no, think... I, think, I think the question makes sense to me yeah? in that okay. uh, formulation. Uh, I think we are quite happy to do that. We are currently a bit uh, constrained in, in, in the manpower. Uh, we've made some linkages uh, before. For example, we have a Python microscope uh, linked to, to an Atari for the user interface as an alternative to cockpit, I believe. And we are quite keen to work with the open source community and to integrate it into, into other packages as well. It's just something that we haven't gotten to yet. Okay. And um, what um, what data format do you export your data in? Is it is that an open um, source format as well that can be read into post processing packages? Yes, I believe I believe diff is an option. Um, I believe we also support some uh, other formats such as uh, DV, which is the format used by our Delta Vision systems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, um, and oh, lots of questions for you, Danny. Um, so yeah, Alex is asking um, uh, easy export to image J for visualization, for example. So I guess that's the OMI TIFF type um, form. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. So you'll be able to open your TIFF images in ImageJ, but I don't think there is a, an easier link between the two pieces of software. Okay. Um, and a question from Martin Hailston. Um, do you envisage that your microscope will have biologists using cockpit on it without much knowledge of hardware or Python? Oh. And if so, what are the challenges on that that still need to be addressed? Yes, so the entire purpose of cockpit is to be able to be used by biologists or people with non-specialized knowledge. So um, even if the software is not at that stage yet, um, I think uh, this is this is the, the ultimate goal. Uh, in terms of challenges, um, let's see, let's see. Um, yeah, I think the, the the graphical user interface can definitely be improved in many regards. I think it could be potentially a bit more intuitive and easier to use. Um, and these are the only things that come to my mind at the moment. Sure, sure. Maybe you could um, create some protocols or wizards or things like that to oh, lead yes, someone through an experiment, point. maybe. That yeah, might documentation, that's very important. Well, thing. yeah, documentation for sure. Um, <laughs> um, and another quick question, because we're running out of time now, um, from Mika. Is is the um, Clarity data processed on the fly? So are you using our on-the-fly processor? To... No. Right, okay. Uh, at least it hasn't been tried before. Uh, all the experiments that I've done were uh, collecting raw data, which could then be processed offline. Okay, all right. So that's one thing that we could improve for sure, because um, to make that fast and seamless, then you can take advantage of the higher speed acquisition. So, uh, yeah, well, well, we could talk about that when we next see you. Um, that That's cool. Um, okay, uh, last chance to ask any other questions. Um, and if not, I guess you'll stay online um, in the background. So if any other questions pop up, Danny, you'll be able to answer them in the chat folder. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Perfect, perfect. Um,